there. You are listening to Flop Culture. This is a podcast all about flops, the good, the bad, and the in-between. I'm your host, Fanula. Hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode on Cheryl. Got a good few emails and responses in about that. Christina got in touch. Hello, Christina, to tell me that she saw Cheryl in 2.22, a ghost story. Saw her in February 2023. Christina said she was actually pretty good in it, but overacted in parts. She is stunning in real life. However, Max Branning from EastEnders was in it and he completely stole the show and then mentioned that the show is coming to the Olympia. I doubt Cheryl's going to be in it. But what I want to know is, in the show, did she say, just tap the fucking table? That wasn't a Geordie accent. Anyway, we also had Mary Lavelle in touch on Patreon and Mary said, the time is right for a Cheryl biopic. Cheryl played by Michelle Keegan or Cheryl played by Cheryl. Cherylception. Let's get into this week's episode, shall we? Euphoria, what the hell is going on? You've Sydney Sweeney two weeks ago in conversation with MTV saying she is, she has no break. The girl is flat out. She's obviously just on flop-tastic Madame Web. Immaculate is out now. That scary nun movie that I might not see. I'm not sure. She's been very busy and, you know, she's in conversation with MTV and he's like, are you taking a break? And she says, no, we're like, we're straight into... Euphoria said she hadn't seen a script. She doesn't know when exactly they're filming, but like the plan is they're going back to film, right? Filming actually hasn't started. The scripts are still being written and they're hoping to start shooting later this year. We have this statement from HBO or from a HBO spokesperson. HBO and Sam Levinson remain committed to making an exceptional third season. In the interim, we are allowing our in-demand cast to pursue other opportunities. I mean... It's not looking good, girls, really, is it? And I get it because obviously you have megastars now of Zendaya, Jacob Elordi, Hunter Schaefer, the aforementioned Sydney Sweeney. They are massively in demand in huge ways. It's probably a nightmare trying to align their schedules. You also have the writer strike, which to be honest, I forgot about and I forgot how much that was probably impacting this. And then also you have the death of Angus Cloud. He died last year at age 25. He died in July. They're probably having to rewrite the season around his loss. No, and especially given the end of season two, without spoilers, he's a pretty significant part of that. So I can appreciate it is difficult, but it is also just a bit like there's rumours that because there is so much time in between, that season three, they're looking at a five-year time jump, which... I can see the for and against. At that point, they're not too old that it's like weird because, you know, some of the charm of Euphoria, if you like Euphoria, is the fact that they're essentially like just teenage delinquents. And the five-year jump would put them out just after college. And like, they would look that age. They, You know, they're not whatever, mid-30s, staring down the barrel of a, a pension and trying to get a crash place, you know, that kind of way. But at the same time... I don't, I don't know. A part of me is just like, maybe we could just kind of leave this where it is and just have like one really good season, season one, and one fine season two and just leave it at that. It just all seems a bit too much now. I don't know. And then I was having a conversation with someone else uh, and I'm going to protect their identity because I want to, um, I, I fear for their safety based on what I say, but... I was taught, obviously shared it on Instagram about the fact that, you know, maybe we just should forget this third season. And they replied and said that they didn't like Euphoria, that they like, they tried, they watched it, didn't really get it. It just seemed very stylistic, which I agree it is. There's a lot of like, you're going off of vibes. But I would have said the Zendaya performance as Rue, as this teenage addict trying to cope with going back to high school after leaving rehab. She's the anchor of that show. Now, I will say, Sydney Sweeney is brilliant as well, but like some of the writing for her character, mm, bizarre, slightly bizarre. And I think if you if you pull apart season two too much, it'll fall apart at the seams. Jacob Elordi, also very good as an eight. Very, very good. But Zendaya, ultimately the anchor. And I was kind of saying that, you know, is Zendaya obviously brilliant performance. She's won two Emmys for her portrayal of Rue. And this person was kind of like, I'm actually not sure if Zendaya can act, right? Hot take. They had just seen Dune 2. I have not seen Dune 2. I haven't seen Dune 1. Will I eventually? Sure. Not into the sandworms right now. Not my vibe. Um, But their take from Dune 2 was that they didn't really think she was as good of an actor as people are letting on. Again, they were like, it's all 
kind of vibes. And then they challenged me. They were like, okay, so what else is she good in? And I struggled to name something else that wasn't euphoria. Malcolm and Marie. But Malcolm and Marie was kind of a bit depressing. You know, like we all watched that during the pandemic. Can I tell you anything else about it? No. Like, I'm sure she was good in it. Do I ever want to watch it again? No. Realised after that that I forgot, obviously she's in Spider-Man, Back to the Future, uh, Home Alone 2, the, that franchise. And she's brilliant in that. I would actually argue that she's brilliant in that, but beyond that, I don't know. Does that person have a point? Is Zendaya all gowns, gowns, beautiful gowns, or is she, you know, an actor of our generation? Do we need to see her in more? I don't know. I think it's hard because she is just very... She is the definition of like a celebrity. Like she has that celebrity energy that you want to gravitate towards and you can't take your eyes off her and she plays the game really well. She's obviously in Challengers, which is coming up soon, kind of sexy tennis movie. We'll report back on that. And we'll see. Maybe we'll watch her on that and we'll have uh, we'll have our decision made on Zendaya. You know what's interesting though? In the space between season two of Euphoria and season three, The Bear will have released, I'm pretty sure it's three seasons. Isn't that kind of nuts? Isn't it just, I am is a funny, funny thing. Potentially four actually, because I think they might be shooting three and four back to back. But anyway, crazy, crazy. What do you think? Euphoria, do we sack it off? Is it actually even a good show? Should I go back and rewatch it? Are we all wrong? Zendaya, do we love her? Overrated? Let me know. Speaking of the bear, uh, Jeremy Allen White is looking to go from the bear to the boss because he's in talks to play Bruce Springsteen in an upcoming movie about the making of his 1982 album, Nebraska. We have no other details. Um, and as I said, he's still in talks, but it, at this point, it's probably all but confirmed. Scott Cooper is circling to write and direct the movie and the movie is titled Deliver Me From Nowhere. I'm not hugely familiar with the Bruce Springsteen lore. Depending on what picture I look at of Jeremy Allen White, sometimes I can see it, sometimes I can't, with regards to the Bruce Springsteen of it all. But um, here's another fella whose star is just ascending, you know what I mean? And here's an example of, you know, a show that's doing it right. A show that's recognising that their stars are really busy and are getting busier. So they're like, right, we need to film 45 seasons of The Bear so we just have them ready because Jeremy Allen White is going to go off playing Bruce Springsteen and Iowa Beery is going to be the most successful girly in the world, you know? She's doing something else. She was doing Marvel. She sacked that off. That's what we need to do, guys, okay? Maybe, Sam Levinson, if you could just maybe try and do that, please. That'd be great. Anyway, who's ready to dance? Step Up 2 burst onto the scene in 2008 with high hopes following the success of its predecessor, Step Up. At its core, Step Up 2 sought to groove its way into the hearts of viewers, showcasing the struggles and triumphs of a diverse group of dancers as they strive to make their mark in the competitive world of street dance. Joining me to discuss Step Up 2, The Streets, is writer, actor and comedian Hannah Mamelis. Enjoy. Hannah Mamelis, you are so welcome to Flop Culture. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled. This has been a long time coming. I've been (laughs) DMing you, harassing you for an email address and we got there in the end. I'm ready, I'm ready. Flop, flop, flop. What did you pick? I picked uh, Step Up to the Streets. (laughs) Step Up to the Streets. Step Up. To, to the, the streets. streets. Yeah, you can two. say it so many different ways. Two. Number two. Number two. Not to be confused with the word T-O. <laughs> T-O. And then dot dot the, the, st- streets. the streets. <laughs> and no Z at the end of streets. <laughs> the streets? No. <laughs> the streets? Question mark. <laughs> That's what they should have called this one. I could have done with more punctuation in my opinion. Um, <laughs> did you watch this when it came out in 2008 or is this a later watch for you? Like what's your relationship to this movie? I'm trying to remember because I am... Um, I think I probably would have watched it in and around that time. I'm trying to remember what age I was. I was about 16. And I know with the first one anyway, um, I I know I definitely watched that when it came out because we did like this, um, <laughs> this like dance to one of the songs in it in school, like a really shit fucking like bad, bad time dance and thought we were incredible. So I think I probably would have watched the other one in and around that time. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I haven't seen the first one. Do I have need have do not? I need to have watched the first one to get this? I mean <laughs> like, you know, I, like I'm no. familiar with obviously it's like the, the film concept that, of dance. Yeah, I'm familiar with the concept of dance. But I know it's the film that like launched kind of Chang Tatum's career yeah. and Jen Duan's and like obviously they ended up getting together, so yeah. this insane chemistry, yeah. whatever. But okay, so you'd watch that because this is this is peak dancing film, dancing in the playground. We're all going to be hip hop dancers. We're all street dancers. 100%. So I'm glad we kind of shared that same experience because oh, I also 100%. had that. I mean, it was like I think that's why like, there were so many dance movies in the 2000s. Mm. And uh, when I was coming in, I was like, "What will I say about that? Will I try and bring it back to 9/11 or something?" <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's a post 9-11 world and we just want to want to watch a bit body move. Like <laughs> In a country divided, what do the people need? What's Popping and locking. Watch some dance, baby. <laughs> um so that's what I'm coming down on. No, I there were so many of them, and yeah, I think it was that peak moment. It was like very aspirational, you mm. know what I mean? Where it was like you need to, particularly, you know, I grew up in, in the middle of nowhere in Connemara and, you know, you'd be having like... And you're telling me there weren't hip-hop groups no, no, in Connemara? What there the were no hip-hop groups. But like, you know, also you'd be going to like the local disco community centre and it was either like people were standing on either side of the room or you were watching a girl get fingered to the beat of Cotton Eye Joe. You know what I mean? Like there was no, there was no in between. It was one or the other. So. <laughs> So you were looking at Jenna, Jenna and Chad and Jenna and being like, wow, this is the me. dream. This is me. what we should really be aspiring towards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, particularly I suppose when you have that romance element too, too, where I'm like, oh my God, they, yeah. they love each other. Because yeah, I guess they did famously love each other. Like they, their chemistry worked and they went and got married. They're not married anymore, are they? They're not married anymore, not unfortunately. Sad. So maybe they lost, the, maybe they need to start dancing again. They just need to start they dancing their again. Up. In a post 9-11 world, they just need to start dancing again. But that's, that, I think that's how they actually reboot the whole Step Up franchise because I didn't realise there's about 45, we could do an entire separate Flap Culture series on how many five, Step Ups there are. Five of them like. Because I, I, I was like, Step Up too, and I was searching in my thing and it was like, Step Up, all or nothing. Step Up, whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, step yeah. Up, this one is three-dimensional for some reason. Exactly, like it's 3D. Just... It's like they didn't know what... It was like, okay, we've like knocked it out of the park with Step Up to the Streets. In fairness, the peak, good. the pinnacle. Pretty good, yeah. Like then, every other movie title, what are you fucking then, doing? just... What, like, what can we put on the end of 3D? 3D? It's in 3D now. That's it, we've made a choice. Like, come on, come on. Oh, okay, so Step Up <clears throat> launched the franchise and yeah. Jenna and Channing's relationship where are we in Step Up to the streets? Well, you What's saw going him in on this there? one, right? Like, yeah, he, he is a in it. Cameo yeah. at the start, I guess, to just like ease people back in. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's He's like, like hey, mamma me, yeah. I love to dance. You were a child on the streets. <laughs> You're like, all right, darling, brilliant. I remember you in nappies. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, yeah, it's really just to, I suppose, show that like we're in the same world here. We're kind of in the same community. Yeah. And yeah, his intro to her is kind of like, oh, like I remember you when you were a kid and you were dancing all around the place. And I remember your mom, like dead mom story, you know what I mean? Hard, classic. Hard to story. Classic. Yeah. Classic. My mom is dead, I need to dance with a pen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In a post 9-11 world. Yeah, in a post 9-11 world. <laughs> There's just layers and layers of trauma <laughs> here. Over and over again. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, it's her intro. <clears throat> and her old vibe is, her name's Andy. Yeah. <clears throat> she, um has a crew that she dances with, but she's kind of in trouble, you know what I mean, at the moment. She's not going to school. She's um, living with her mom has de- is died and her mom's friend is kind of looking after her. Um, but she's, yeah, she's slunking out, she's not doing good. And she's been given an ultimatum and it's like, you know, you either kind of, we're, I'm going to send you to Texas to your aunt. And she's like, no, don't. Um, what about the streets? What about the streets and my dance? <laughs> Um, and then Channing Tatum's like, oh, here, here's the crack. Like, I'll get you into... So the the there's a school that they go to. Yeah. Dance school. Um, like, private kid dance school. Maryland School <coughs> of the Arts. Exactly. And, uh, and in the first movie, that's where Channing Tatum kind of... In the first one, he ends up kind of um, wrecking the place. Okay. And his community service is essentially like cleaning in there and that's okay. where he meets your one yeah. and then you know it's like you shouldn't be cleaning you should be dancing 
<laughs> um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, this one, he's like, look, I can get you an in if you do this audition and then you won't have to go to Texas and blah, 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 blah. So that's like how it starts, how yeah. it kicks off. And it has that classic dance movie trope, the audition scene where she's doing hip hop and of course the ballerinas, well, she may as well be committing crimes on stage. Oh yeah. This will never do. Yeah, what this will never do. What is woman doing with her arse? Oh, it's just, <clears throat> it's perfect. It's so good. She gets to the school anyway and she meets this kind of, like essentially these other gang of she's trying to do the hip hop dance and there's a teacher there and he's like no absolutely not we're doing it my way or the highway you need yeah. to be pointing your toes you're going to be doing ballet grinds at me you fucking dope mm-hmm. and then she meets this other fella and these and these other kind of Misfits. this ragtag group yeah, yeah exactly who are <clears> also <throat> clearly hip hop dancers like street dancers mm. they're not aware of the streets sorry we should explain What's this? What? Because I didn't realize. I thought it was literally just like the street. No, but the, the streets, streets is the, the streets is yeah. The, the definitive article. The capital T. The capital S streets. Yeah. What is that? What's going on there? That's like this kind of underground dance competition okay. that goes on, kind of in the community where it's like you know very you know ad hoc, lo-fi kind of like we just we just see what happens. We we go with the groove, but it's like yeah, it's underground. You can't get into it if you don't know what's going on. And the crew that she used to dance for the four four one zero, I think four one zero, because it's the it's she's Airy from Baltimore code, and it? it's the Baltimore yeah area. Yeah, code, yeah, so that that crew like they would do it all the time, and they're like the reigning champions of the streets. It's essentially like a dance battle thing, kind yeah. of underground dance battle. Um, and uh, and you're only alerted to it by like a text message the night before, but only the people in the know get the message. And yeah. um, what I find really funny about like the whole. You know, she goes to the school. There's this bunch of misfits. The fact that the movie is trying to tell you that the the underdog misfits are the kids who are pre- playing paying for private school, <laughs> like they're the ones you have to root for. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, what the fuck is not that? The ri- not the rich person propaganda. Like, truly wild. And like, you only think about it, you're like, hang on, wait a minute, what's going on there? <laughs> Because the cool kids don't like you, like, for fuck's sake. Yeah, and so, yeah, she goes to school. She kind of, the, the, like, um, head of the school, his younger brother is the kind of guy who, like, fancies her chase. Chase Collins. Chase, with his kind of frosted tips. Yeah. Man, Frosted Tips had me in a chokehold. Yeah, I think they had everyone in a chokehold. His real name is Robert Hoffman, so I was checking to see if he was related to Dustin Hoffman. He's oh, yeah. A, he's not. He's, he's just, not, yeah. He's just... I kind of wouldn't imagine he was, <laughs> a little bit. I was like, Nepo, baby! And then <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah. actually. No, 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 no. no, no. Um, yeah, he, his brother owns the school, and he's kind of like, kind of rebellious, but not at all, mm. really. Um, and he's the one who suddenly has this insider knowledge because he's like the cool kid in yeah. the school and was like dating the cool girl and they're Played kind of Cassie. like royalty. I was like, yeah, this what? is not, yeah. my eyes are not laying on Cassie Ventura right now, but they were, she's there. She's there, she's doing it. Yeah, I don't think they utilise her like enough no, at all. No, She's kind of just there. I was going to say one dimensional, barely, barely, barely a dimension to be seen. A corner? If a Cassie corner had just gotten Cassie. a good script, what could we have seen oh, from Cassie is. and Step Up to the Streets? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, he's the one who points out to her. He's like, "Look, we've got all this talent in the school," and then it's like a kind of like Ocean's Eleven like heist meet the team montage where it's like this guy he pops and locks so good that it'd make your mother cry. You know what I mean? Like, but they, one of them, he's just like, she can't speak English, but it doesn't matter because she can dance. And yeah. it's like brilliant and then there's another fellow who like everyone's really mean to him because of his smile yeah, I was like what yeah, I know this, this is just biz- they call him smiles, smiles. Like, I was like this yeah. is awful like this is why he's a misfit because he's got gammy teeth <laughs> like this poor guy this poor man so nice. um, yeah I think they literally with the with the girl they literally say like um like she doesn't need to speak English because dancing is our language yeah. and you're like yeah yeah I was like yeah get it Say the line! Say the line! Don't forget their language! <laughs> um, <clears throat> and they form their own crew. Yeah. And they kind of, kind of... So the, her crew has kicked her out because she's in this, like, posh school now. Yeah, and she's been kind of... She was trying to keep it a secret from them, but she, like, wasn't turning up to, like... The, the, the pra- do you practice the, the for the practice, streets? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, she wasn't yeah. turning up for the dance things anyway. And Tuck, the leader, was like, 
right, fuck this, you're out, essentially. Yeah, and they flip on her so quick. So quickly. For all their talk of family. Family, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's the point where it's like, you're not actually acting like family and I'm going to go make my other family over here with these freaks. <laughs> with these fucking freaks. Look at this guy, he's got a shit smile. Like, that's his personality. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh god so yeah and then they're in opposition with the 410 and the 410 just turn into arseholes all of a sudden they're just like real mean yeah to um, the point where one of the original members like her friend ends up leaving because she's like yeah Missy yeah this is all gone really well. yeah so Missy ends up joining the new school do they ever end up having a name no no the no. new group anyway she ends up joining the new group and kind of helps them to integrate get back into at them. yeah and integrate yeah. Yeah. And, and get and you know she knows the streets as well so she like gets the text on the night that it's happening and stuff also Missy did you spot the bit in it where um, uh, there's like a she has like a family barbecue at one stage and she's trying to set her uh, Andy up with her cousin yeah. and she like is like you know believe me if I wasn't his cousin I'd be jumping on that and you're like sorry what? Bit I of, completely <laughs> missed that. Bit of light that. incest in there like just a little bit of light incest. Perfect. Great. Brilliant. Love it. Love it. Oh, every Flap Culture episode there is some there reference way back to incest and I don't know how it keeps happening. Um, it's your guess. Brilliant. Yes. Something wrong. Maybe. Or yeah. I'm you. <laughs> Maybe you Vanilla. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> Maybe I'm the incest. <laughs> Who is the girl, girl I see? see? Anyway, okay, okay so okay. the crews are competing. What's going on with the school in the middle of this having a fundraiser? Because that was kind of losing me a bit towards it. They're like fundraising for a new building and they have to perform at that, but it clashes with a, a performance on the streets, I think. Yeah, it's so ambiguous. They really don't like... <laughs> they like try and sew it in as a thread but then they don't like take it home it's plot light like I will I will say where like it's just you know they have like a little <clears throat> you know they're like this is our our new building where we're gonna be you know blah 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 and you know they have the like you know what is this for ants little kind of setup of it and um but it, it, yeah it, like it's so you know in that way that a lot of these movies are where like when you come to the end of it, it seems like it's all building to this kind of fundraiser where it's like, yes, they have to like, you know, win over the funders and get the money to make this and they have to do this dance to do that. But then, you know, you don't even, you don't even see really any of it that. You just see the night of the fundraiser. Half of them are just walking around serving things yeah. to people. Uh, and um, and then they get a, a text to say that the streets are on tonight and they end up ditching the fundraiser. Sorry, I should say I actually skipped a large chunk of the plot there. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> the, the reason why they are working at the fundraiser and they don't it like initially they're not fully going to the streets. There's been an issue where the four one zero have retaliated yeah. and they've wrecked the school and yeah. obviously. Uh, Colin's brother or cousin or whatever who's running the school is pissed. Yeah. Obviously, this place has been fucking vandalized. Yeah. And he's like, a cops that it's Andy and it's probably more of them, but Andy takes the full fall. So he's like, right, Andy, skedaddle, you're yep. fucking expelled. Open at him. You big street dancing fool. Yeah, yeah disrespecting the medium the of dance. Get back to the streets. <laughs> Get back to the streets of there. So <laughs> she's like, right, Grant. But then eventually they all, they realise that they have to come together as a family, power of dance, etc., etc. So yeah, they yeah. ditch the fundraiser House when they get the text world. and they're like, right, we're going to go, we're going to serve it to them, we're going to show them. Yeah. And that's when Andy also goes and she gives her big, big speech about how like dance is about... Family, etc., family et cetera, et cetera, and, yeah, 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 and also there is a you know there's a an instance before where you see them kind of be a bit shit too. Like they go and try and initially like m- m- see the four one out in their turf, yeah, and they're like, oh, we're just gonna like suss them out, and then the four one out are like, all right, go on, show us what you got, and they're shit, like yeah, it's bad, they're dog shit, they're yeah. just like, bah, 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 it's bah. so bad, um, and so <laughs> I don't know what they do to change that. You never see them like get better no they're just suddenly better it's just that Missy is able to tell them about this pranking thing which can you explain what that is for anyone who hasn't watched the movie in a while and can't remember yeah so it's like there's another element to the streets where like I think each of the dance crews that are taking part have to do a prank this is so 2008 by the way like this has never been like social media has just begun and wow the internet is blowing people's minds fully and also when you see like the the movie starts with like essentially a flash mob sequence and you're like nah nah (laughs) not a flash mob it's 
it's yeah it's it, I, it was hard I had to push through to keep going for you Hannah just I want to make that clear I, I love it I fucking <laughs> love it and I also love there's something really something I've always found really funny about like the idea of flash mobs is that you know when you do a flash mob and, and say like you're doing it and then you realise that like everyone's a part of the flash mob except like one person and they're like who's that for? Who's that for? And it's kind of like that in the train and start with the deal. We're like hang on they're all in on this. Then it's just one guy who's like what was that? Like <laughs> What? Just like on the most laborious commute ever, I'd imagine, just like barely making ends meet. Like cost of living crisis on his yeah, whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a fella gets up and he's doing a fucking headstand. He's like, this is the last thing. I have to go in and do 45 exiles. Yeah, you've just watched I a woman pretend this. she has a baby and then fuck the blanket at you. And you're like, ah, ah. I watched that baby die in my mind. You killed that baby. Um, oh my god! So yeah, they have to do this. Uh, I think that that's what we're watching in the start is them doing their prank. Yeah. It's like that that first one. And so this new crew, the I think they call themselves whatever the name of the college is. They call themselves that crew, which is so lame. Like, Ms. Msa. Yeah. Msa. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that is they, very fucking lame. It's Jesus really Christ. like come on, come on. Um, why are you rooting for them? You shouldn't be like... I kind of wasn't yeah. and I think that might, might have actually been my issue. I didn't really like... No, I didn't like the 410 and I was like, Tucker, you're a bit of a knob. But a like total knob, yeah. MSA, I was just a bit like, all right. Cool. Is that Moose fella as well? I'm like, shut up. I know, people... Yeah, well, Moose fucking walked so Timothy Chalamet could run. <laughs> like, he is the precursor. No, he is. He is, like... <gasps> and oh like we're God. only just realising that that we made this we made Chalamet yeah, no, we out of the parts of other men yeah. you know what I mean that came before <laughs> and I am don't know why we did sugar spice and everything nice yeah um, so their prank essentially is that they decide to turn around to the 410 and like prank Tucker and they kind of they have like loads of shots of him and they're like dancing in the background and, and he doesn't realise an old woman uh, uh, and, and I was like yeah sick sick burn sick guys burn, sick burn sick burn um, and then they like <laughs> it is like when you when you think about it like it's so it's so childish just like just, they just leave a fish in his house and you're like oh <laughs> oh you got Which, him I will say that was a classic leaving Sir Prank in our in my secondary school. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. You, did people do that? I never did it. Jesus, no. Big swat fucking head here. Absolutely <laughs> not. I'd be bawling crying. No, the six years would regularly, there was more than one occasion where there was fish put behind radiators and stuff. Wow, okay. Yeah, classic, yeah. like. Uh, when he walks in, uh, Tucker says, why does it smell like broccoli and ball sweat? <laughs> <laughs> Such specific things. So specific. Why those two? Yeah. The alliteration. Um, so yeah, that's the prank that they do. And that's like a part of the whole thing as yeah. well. So you have to do your prank and then you have to do your dance on the night in the streets. Yeah. What did you think of the, the final dance? Did you like it? It's the best part of the entire movie. Yeah, it, it's it is. Absolutely, like, everything is building to this. Because I've seen, obviously, I've seen scenes of it. I haven't watched this. This is the first time i watched the full movie in full. Yeah. Like <laughs> everyone knows that scene of them. Like they're sopping wet. They're and they are dripping. They are just... They are taking everything out of Timberland and Justin Timberlake's uh, song bounce. It's it's yeah. perfection. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Absolute perfection. It's great. Yeah. The, <sighs> <sighs> that makes for great Stunning. audio. Yeah, truly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, best best dance sequence of the rain. Fuck Gene Kelly out the door. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, see you later. That Gene you know, Kelly also, is spinning in his grave. Yeah, goodbye, this. Gene Kelly. <laughs> Um, Tom Holland definitely pick, picked some notes off that for, 100%. His, for his umbrella dance. You know 100%. I mean? um, it's great. Now, I will say I'd love to know more lore behind the filming of that scene because they do just all look so wet and so wet. Like, are you a dancer? Can you dance? No, I had to do choreography for something I did like last week. Yeah. Um, and it's fucking hard. I don't know how anyone does it. It's... Like I, so my hard. brain doesn't work in that way yeah. where it's like, do this with your arm and then this with your leg. I just short circuit. Yeah. I'm like, ah, <laughs> like I just, I can't. <laughs> it's only if you do it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Like I've always thought that watching Drag Race where I'm like, how do they do this? How do they learn oh that God, choreo yeah. in a, a fucking night to do it? I just, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'd break down. Um, but yeah, it, but even, yeah, like you say, they're filming this. That would have taken ages to film. So are they just wet the whole That's time? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, hypothermia like, to the max. Sopping. Just 
sop and wet. Yeah, it's just so wet. It is unbelievable. And I will say, as much as I'm taking the piss out of Moose, like he's incredible. Like it's so like, it, and it's whoever choreographed obviously the full scene as well. But like yeah. it's very like. Jackson inspired and it's just it is because I'm going to be honest up to this point a lot of the dancing in the middle didn't really wasn't hitting your wasn't hitting really, like the initial dance that she has with so there's a thing where I, before she goes to the school whenever and it's decided that she goes before Channing Tatum's character mm. whose name is absolutely irrelevant to me and irrelevant to this film <laughs> yeah. realistically uh, where he's like He's like, look, I, let's have a dance off, and like, if you lose, we're sent. I You're we're going sending to this fucking school, yeah. right? Essentially, <clears throat> that it was incredible because, like, again, they're in the streets. Wait, wait, sorry, it's not that they're in the streets, but wherever the streets <laughs> takes place, the streets is a very the abstract is concept. A real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two extremely white people talking about the streets. I know. Um, but they're in this, it's this kind of underground club thing, whatever. And then it's Channing's like, okay, we're going to have a dance off. This floor splits open and they just have these like, fuck, again, the dancers are probably screaming, but they're essentially like trampoline so they can like bounce off and yeah. like. It's class. I just, there is nothing beats a good bounce. dance off, a bounce <laughs> and a good dance off scene where it's like, there's something at stake and we're like battling each other. Like yeah. the, the thought of it being a battle and see, and you know where Andy's like, oh, and she's like throwing her hands up in the air because you know she's losing. Yeah, and yeah. at one point, I have her written down here, Channing Tatum, like he trampolines off the floor and then like his shirt comes off. Right. And I was just like, you've lost it, Andy. Yeah, Bates. Like, yeah the bit where he like hangs it on it and like yes. shimmies out. Oh, it's so good. So good. He yeah. is phenomenal. You should watch the first one. Okay. Like, because he is magnetic. Yeah. I mean, it's the same when you have you watched the Magic Mike's. Yes. Um, no, I haven't watched the most recent one, The Last Dance. I don't think I have either. I don't know if it's very good. Anyway, Probably if someone not. wants to do that flap culture, hello flap culture. Well, it was, it was funny with the Magic Mics where it was like, you know, the first one, everyone thought it was going to be really like horny, hot, sexy, you know what I mean? Let's but it was like, it, Matthew McConaughey, trauma, Real dark. fucking dark, all about like toxic masculinity and like, you know, and then... And then the, the second, second one, they were like, one is exactly, never mind, what's Joe Manganiello's number? Like, yeah, we, need to, we need him now. We need his abs like, now. We need to make the movie that we told them we were going to make in the first place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like lads fucking... Just uh, lads. Just lads. Donald Glover's in that. What the... That was such a yeah, strange Yeah, the bit in the house, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Very strange. Um, what, was, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just got oh, sorry, the first one. Well, men. sorry, the thing with the first one is, and again, I'm saying this, like, having not watched it, but yeah. uh, but we've referenced it, the fact that obviously the lead characters have this insane chemistry because mm. obviously they ended up being in a real life relationship. Yeah. I don't know if these two lead characters have the same... They don't. ...chemistry. It's very tepid. It is. What I'll say was, and I think this is maybe, I'm coming off the back of, um, I don't know, I found, like, I, loads of movies that, like, you know, that are from, I don't know, the 2000s that we look back on now and we're like, oh, they those were a load of shite. They're actually not as shite as... If that movie were to come out today, it would be unwatchable. Mm. Like, it would just be so bad. Mm. And, like, you know, in terms of their chemistry, like, it's not, like, off the charts. But I do kind of believe it and I feel like they're, like, <laughs> trying to like each other. <laughs> But like I watched fucking Anyone But You the other day. I still haven't watched it. Oh my God. Is it bad? It's so bad. They're re-releasing it for Valentine's Day. It's like the Valentine's Day encore because it because obviously it's a rom-com like but it yeah. came out of Christmas. It's painful. But it's making so much money. Is but it, it? that was the whole thing where it was like they were because they were it was like are they're, they're, fucking, che- they're, they're cheating on their yeah. partners because they're with each other because of the movie and it's like no they're not. They're not. They've no chemistry. They okay, can't brilliant. be either that or like generally you know you find like sometimes chemistry comes from the fact that like you haven't f- fucked someone and you're and those are the fuck vibes you yeah. know what I mean like I wanna fuck you can't fuck you yeah um, and and sometimes actors lose chemistry if they fuck right from the get go and then their chemistry's gone yeah so either they like fucked on the first day and then they lost all their <laughs> chemistry <laughs> which I don't know why they do that <laughs> or they just ha- they don't have any and like there's really there's like a kind of dead mom narrative in anyone be it's not a spoiler like he yeah, has a no, dead yeah, mom yeah, 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 yeah. he has a dead mom and like he talks she he essentially is like here's a wrench she's like why is there a wrench in your gaff he's like framed a wrench a normal fucking wrench and she's like what's going on with that wrench <laughs> and he's like and he's like my mom gave it to me to remember I can always fix things. <laughs> what are you? What are you talking about? 
Sorry, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> Oh. Sorry, my mom gave me this toilet brush to remember that I could always get through the shit. Like, what are you saying? So, I don't know. I like I I watched that. That's the last movie I watched before I watched this, and then I watched this again, and I was like, you know what? This is gonna look like Oppenheimer next class. to that. Yeah, brilliant. Class. Perfect. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like the IMDb description just reads Romantic sparks occur between two dance students From different backgrounds at the Maryland School of the Arts Which is like any It could be I could, We could be talking about any dance movie from the noughties That's you know it what I mean? And I, I think like you know most of the, the Like I had a look at some of the reviews that were You know particularly you know I think it has 28% on Rotten Tomatoes Which is pretty low mm. um, And I don't think it deserves that I don't think it deserves 28 because it's funny because it made way more money than the, the first, first one. one so, yeah. And now, obviously, the first one launched the franchise, whatever. So that's understandable. Yeah, and I think it's off the back of the first one yeah. that it made all of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, but I think the reason people, what I saw for people giving out about it is that they say it's like just really formulaic, right? So it's like, you know, you're you're following a formula. But, but my argument to that is like, but we like formula. Formula mm. is what our little lizard brains need. Yeah. To like, like, oh yeah, this happens and then this happens and then this happens. Like, particularly with a movie like this where you're going into it with a level of escapism and you you know it's not going to be like, they're not going to be getting into like hardcore stuff and race issues and, you know, all of that. It's just very light entertainment. So in that case, you want something that's very like... By the book, yeah, you know, yeah, that's fair. I don't really want to see Christopher Nolan doing a tenet on a on a dance no. film. You know what I mean? I don't need You're to be grand. confident. Yeah. Thanks. I need you know. I, do you know the joke in Family Guy where it's like he, it's it's like I'm rich and you're poor, but together like dance can bring us together. Yeah, yeah. perfect, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. How do they overcome those adversities? Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. The reviews were not kind to say the least. As I said, like it went on to gross like 150 million worldwide, mm. and it was only made for like 17 million. Um, Laura Bush- Bushel for BBC said will dance triumph over adversity will love between two attractive vacuous actors <laughs> conquer all life poses some very hard questions but these ain't them folks still it's hard not to watch and wonder at some of the dancing and step up to it's pretty awesome enough to make some terrible acting and even clunkier dialogue bearable until the next huffing sequence <laughs> teenies wanting amazing moves tight abs tight abs all around and cheesy romance will lap this up yeah I mean yeah like, and I'm okay with all of that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I just want to, I just want to watch the dancing. I want to watch people moving their bodies. Yeah. But also, can I say, the soundtrack is banging. Oh, the soundtrack is, I say that on, I know Justin Timberlake is public enemy number one. And I yeah, completely course. appreciate that. But some of the earlier Timbaland stuff. That Timbaland that album. Song, now, I will say Timbaland is probably like, he kind of owns that movie in some ways. You know what I mean? Because that scene, that soundtrack yeah. thing. Oh. Perfection. Tempo has reached critical level. Yeah. Tempo has reached critical level. Uh, the Flo Rida song. Yeah. That's it. Low, yeah. Low, yeah, low. Staple. Oh. Staple. Oh. I mean, that was the song it's for a, like... In some ways, the movie is a very gorgeous time capsule. You know what I mean? Like I it, think It's so. very, like, it's inoffensive. It has aged badly in the sense of like technology and pop culture in the way that all of these films will. Any of like anyone but you is going to f- look and like fucking sour milk to the aliens that inhabit Earth in twenty fifty six. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So like in some ways, I'm like, yeah, actually, I think you're right. Like, I think it's a nice little perfect insight. It into, is what it is. It is you what know? it is. And yeah, the fashion, all of it, like everything is is such a. I was listening to something the other day, and people were talking about you know there are certain eras that we can still like ascribe like style to and you know what I mean like oh that was what people wore or that was what people listened to and then you get into it gets blurry in like maybe like 2013 up until now because it's all a bit more mashy yeah you know what I mean but whereas back then you could go oh yeah that's so specific to that time and it like makes you think about that and feel that in a very specific way you know we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back after this. Do you remember what else came out the month that it was released? Do you remember where you were in, I think it was February 2008? February 2008. <clears throat> because it only, when it came out, it only opened at number three. But in terms of that month, it had a lot of like 
stiff competition and so a lot of other flops in this month I will say and movies that I think are actually worse than this one okay yeah no Feb Feb 2008 I think I was riddled with glandular fever perfect so classic yeah. you yeah. know what I mean that's another t- nice time capsule from 2008 100% yeah 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 bring that back bring well, no, don't, don't bring back don't glandular bring fever back. But just... don't please don't bring it back um I've yeah. got them here if you want to know. So the number one grossing film for February 2008, Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, Best of Both Worlds concert. Wow, brilliant. okay. And then we had Jumper in at number two. Oh, yeah. Hayden Christensen. When are we getting the Hayden Christensen Boo, Adam's putting us on down. I don't really know was why. That, that was his one thing after, was that after Star Wars and him trying to be and like, here's my next movie. Yeah, and it was. God, was what a, such a what fucking... What a vapid, vapid man. Now we think it made money, but uh, critically, people fucking hated it. Fool's Gold. Was pretty? The Kate Hudson, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, yeah. Bit, like, significantly shitter than How to Lose a Guy in Tennis. Sure. Couldn't tell you the plot of that. I no, think. I actually... What is it? Are they mine? No, they're not minors. Are they're they minors? No, there's, there is something that they're actually looking for gold. Sorry, are Kate they not? Kate Hudson down in the fucking mine. No, it's something... They are actively looking... I don't know. Can someone... <gasps> again... HelloFlopCultureGmail.com Please come on and do that film so we can watch together. The Spiderwick Chronicles. Oh, yeah, wild. I read those books and I never saw books. the movies. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, book yeah, yeah. slapped. I feel like the movie was not that good. Well, um, it was all, yeah. And then Step Up to the Streets. Okay, yes. Number five. Uh, in, in my mind, Step Up to the Streets, the, the superior of all of those. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. I mean... What a film. How is it in comparison to like when you first watch and I'm watching it now? Like how was that like transition for you or like what was the experience like? I don't, it's funny. You know when like sometimes the critical thinking centre of your brain is just shut off for certain things. Yeah. This movie is just one of those for me where I was like, I had read some of the reviews and I know the faults and I'm watching and I'm like, I don't, I don't agree. I think it's just fucking solid. Like, I don't... And I'm, like, looking at them and I'm like, look at that. That's great. That's a funny joke. Look, they're looking at each other there. That's a relationship. I don't know what it is. There's something, like... I thought I would watch it again and be like, ah, it's a load of shit. And I was like, nah, it's great. I love it. Do you ever think we'll see a renaissance for these kind of dance movies in the way that they were such a feature of the noughties or not? Well, it's interesting because I think there were they were a feature of the eighties too. True, yeah. You know? So like what you had, um, like flash dance, dirty dancing, um what else? There was a bunch of them. So I'm sure there's an element and I'm sure there's something you can kind of pin it to, because it is that kind of escapism thing. I read an interesting thing on on step up and some of those dance movies of the 2000s where it was somebody trying to draw a parallel between that it was also when people were getting really into watching like talent shows mm. talent shows were becoming like a big thing yeah. in that era and so you were watching people on talent shows like dancing or like singing because this stuff. is peak America's Best I don't know if you ever watched America's Best Dance Crew I loved America's Best Dance Crew right. uh, Lil Mama one mm, of the judges yeah. JC Ch- uh, your man from NSYNC oh yeah yeah. Chazzy what's his second name no Chazzy idea. Chav anyway he's on it anyway Adam please google that <laughs> so I'm not getting the pro- the NSYNC fans are going to kill me yeah they're coming for um, you and actually one of the winning groups is in this movie as well Jabberwockies the ones that wear the masks, the masks. I remember okay, I, Mario yeah. Lopez host of the show I fucking mm. love the Marcus Best Dance Crew JC Chazzy min- JC Chazzy yeah. the minute we got MTV it was absolutely over for me I was like my, that that's when my brain started atrophying I was like yeah. I can watch America's Best Bye. Dance Crew now I'm finally committing with my peers sure um, yeah th- I never considered the talent show link that's very true yeah, I think that there's something to be said for that. I, I do think, I think like, you know, if we're still around in however many years, maybe 20 years. God, I hope not. Me too. Yeah. Let it end. I'm over it. <laughs> Please let it I end. I haven't found the power and love of dance, so <gasps> what's the point if not, you know? <laughs> um, I, I have a feeling, I, I think it's something that people come back to, you know what I mean? Because it is, it's like a physical expression thing, you know, dance as metaphor, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I think we will probably swing around to it again at some point, you know. It's going to be TikTok dances though, isn't it? God. Are we going to get a full 120 minutes We've of... already gotten that. My We're already d- saturated d- my, with it. They made a TikTok about me and it. it's gotten like 120,000 likes. And then it's going to be Charlie D'Amelio and she saves it. Oh God. Yeah. What a grim timeline we live grim, on. Grim, grim, grim. Um, 
what would be your closing pitch for someone to revisit this or your argument as to why it's actually not a flop? Um, if you want to watch just bodies flowing in the expression of humanity um, and everything, you know, we have to offer in this this kind of good and, and sweet world and, you know, what what comes from our hearts and, and comes out our our souls through our bodies. Um, and also just, I don't know, hot, hot people doing stuff. It's always a good time, you know. And songs, b- banging songs, dancing to banging songs. Like you actually can't beat that, you know what I mean? I forgot to mention John M. Chu directed this, who's doing the yeah, he's the doing the Wicked, Wicked adaptation and he's got on it. He does a lot of the Fast and Furious movies. So Yeah, it kind of blew my mind that I, I saw that trailer come out the other day and watched it and then I was like, hey, that's the same guy. There you go. Wild. That's range. Yeah. That's range. What a man. What a man. Hannah, what a pleasure it's been. Where can people find out more about you, see things that you do, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, probably Instagram or something. I think I'm at Hannah Mam. Brilliant. That's the one. That's, it's That's to the, the point. <laughs> it's to the point. An absolute pleasure. You are always Thanks, welcome back to Flop Culture. Thank you so much. Thanks. Big thank you to Hannah. I leave all of her links below. The entirety of Step Up to the Streets is on YouTube. Watch it as God intended on YouTube. That is all for me this week. I very much appreciate you listening. Please come over and follow us on social media. It's at flopculture underscore pod. We're nearly at 2,000 followers on uh, Instagram. So I'd love to get that number up if you haven't followed over there. We do like games every week. If you are looking to guess the week's episode, we do some fun little games over there. It's fun. I'd love your ratings. Please rate wherever you're listening. I would appreciate it. And as I mentioned, we're over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash flop culture very excited I'm recording with Own Keen this week uh, we might do the doubler on the Fleabag episodes so we're all ready for you Carla Kay is back next month we're watching After We Collided the sequel and of course as previously mentioned Zara Hedman will be checking in and we will be discussing Cowboy Carter Beyonce's next album Act 2 I'm very excited it's patreon.com forward slash flop culture where you get at least at least three bonus episodes a month sometimes more it depends Shout out to some new patrons. Hello, Bridget. Hello, Stephanie. And hello, Aoife. And hello, Maggie. I'm not sure if I said hi to all of you already, but I appreciate you. Thank you so much for subscribing. A reminder, some of these episodes are available to watch on YouTube. Just look me up. It's Fanula J if you prefer a video podcast. Once again, this has been Flat Culture. It has been edited by Adam Shannon. I very much appreciate you listening and I cannot wait to see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.